Hi everyone, welcome to episode 17 of the Shape of My Heart Knitting Podcast. I'm Flaminia, a knitter from Italy, and this is the knitting channel where I talk about all of my knitting projects, what I finished since the last update, what I'm working on, if I casted on something new, if I bought new yarn or new supplies, and today is a pretty full episode as well. We have two garments finished object, one accessory you haven't seen before, uh three new whips and just i've worked on my past whips as well and some acquisitions if you want to call them so but but i'll talk about it later anyways as always there will be timestamps in the description box so you can skim the video and just skip the parts you're not interested in and you will also find in the description box like where you can find me on like ravelry instagram and all that and also uh, links and just extra information of my on on the projects that I'll be talking about. And also, if you have questions on anything really, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I think we can get started. My first finished object is the one which I am wearing, and it is the Barack Nouveau by Rachel Eastley or Unwind Knitwear and this is how it looks it's gorgeous but with order I'm looking at my phone just because I have like um notes uh, I used wool in it British wool cones the main color is pine forest and the contrast color is morning frost i knitted a size medium and yeah the pattern calls for light light fingering weight yarn and this yarn was just right for it and it's also so good for color work it's just i'll show you and like a close a close-up of like the fabric because it's really gorgeous and yeah light fingering weight yarn i think the gauge is 28 stitches and 34 rows, which is quite tiny if you ask me, and I used 3.5 millimeter needles to achieve that gauge, and I needed a size medium. So as you can tell, I think, this is a circle, circular yoke constructed sweater, and uh, you start by casting on stitches at the neckline, and you just work down while increasing and following the color work chart, which is in the pattern. And then, you know, split for sleeves, work the body and work the sleeves, which are tapered. Yeah, as you can tell, the color work is not just on the yoke. It also goes on a little bit on the body and on the sleeves, which is really, I mean, it's, it's pretty unique. You know, most of color work yoke sweater are just worked on the yoke and but I love how big the color work section is on this one. And so let's talk about modifications. Yeah, first of all, um, the pattern calls for like, a you can either do a folded neckline or a like single layered neckline, but either way, uh, the neckline in total should be like two centimeters long. And I did a uh, double, so, the pattern suggests to like knit two centimeters and not fold it or four centimeters and fold it. And I knitted four centimeters and I didn't fold it. So it's twice as long, but it looks really nice. And this is a modification that I stealed from uh, a friend that inspired me to knit this sweater, uh, Amanda from the Crafting Sparrow Knitting Channel, YouTube channel, knitting YouTube channel. And yeah, so then you like work short rows to get the back to raise and you just start the color work and you work it down. Another modification, yes, is the length of sleeves and of the body. As this is color work, I don't know why, also with my previous color work yoke sweater, I was a bit scared that it was going to look I don't know, a bit too traditional, I guess. So I cropped it a little bit. I think this is four centimeters shorter than it was, than what it is supposed to be. 
and but i think that the length in the pattern is actually good like it's not too long or anything and yeah and also the length on the sleeves i made it a little bit longer like there is so much thought that went into this pattern and it is very very nice to see basically yeah i mean the beginning of round is in the back basically if you've never knitted like a color work anything in the round as when you knit stripes like as when you knit in the round you don't knit like a round and then you go up you knit in the in a spiral so when at the beginning of round you switch color you get a little jog and the designer thought to like change a tiny tiny bit the first repeat called like color work repeat of each round to make the transition at the beginning of round less visible and it actually i think it looks very nice i don't think i'm will be able to show you maybe i'll put up a picture of, of the back but i cannot see any jog or anything so that worked really well but I had some problem with the gauge of this. Basically the like stocking net gauge was fine. Most knitters tend to knit their color work um, more tightly or anyways, the gauges tend to be different. Either it's looser or tighter. Most people it's tighter, I feel like. And so they need to go up a needle size. And I've only knitted like one color work project before this. This was my second one. And I was like, well, I tried knitting a couple of rounds and I was like, well, I feel in my hands that I'm knitting loose, more loosely than when I knit my stockinette in just one color. So I was like, it would probably be fine. Turns out it was fine, but I had to block it out a little bit. So it was a tad tight. So what... I think what causes the, I don't know if you, if you notice that I just pull the neckline down sometimes because it hurts me that the, like the fit around here is very good as the designer like designed it, it fits really well. The point is, uh, basically the start of the color work just sits on the, like the top of your shoulders. So for me, it can easily ride up like this. Like, not this much, honestly, like, uh, just to show you, you know? Um, but what happens is that if I pull it down, um, you know, it is quite stretched over my shoulders, so it tends to be straight and not be, like, a round neckline, but because I think this is how it's supposed to look. So I'm just trying, you know, while I wear it to keep it like this, so maybe, you know, wearing it, it will mold to my body a little bit better. But that's why I lengthened the sleeves a little bit because I was like, if the sweater rides up in the shoulders, I will like end up with a, you know, too short of a sleeve for my liking. So I lengthened the sleeves. You know, this thing is not something that bothers me particularly to do. And I also, while I blocked this, I put it on anger. This is not very heavy, so I wasn't worried that it, it was going to like droop and lengthen too much. It was just to give like a more defined fit of on the shoulders, you know? I hope that's clear. Uh, this gauge problem also resulted in like, uh, like it wasn't too visible up here, like it was kind of puckering here. So I could see that the stock in a gauge was a little bit looser, but it blocked out. But what I was really scared of is when I just, uh, you know, you need the color work on the body and then you go back to stocking it and then you could really see that it was going to, it was ballooning a lot and I was able to block it out, but I think you can still see a little bit, but I think that is, it's not like a gauge problem. I think that's more of a density problem, like this part as you have floats and color work and you know it's double the thickness uh like it is more structured while you know this can you know this folds easily while this part is very structured it doesn't like really stay so yes and also when i split for sleeves i was really worried because the 
there weren't many stitches on the sleeves. So I was really stretching it with blocking. I just blocked just the yoke and I was like, let's hope it will be fine. But yeah, with this color work on the sleeve, I used um, four millimeter needles. So I went up a needle size and that actually works so well. So I think I'm gonna do it for my next color work project, which I don't know when it's gonna be. I don't know which one it's gonna be, but it's better. Like I think that I prefer knitting color work sweaters. I don't know about small accessories. I'm not really good with um, magic loop color work knitting. I'm not able to gauge like the um, float length and all of that. I mean, maybe I will learn someday, but today is not the day. So yes, for this, I, you know, I really didn't want this to be too tight. I don't know if it looks too tight, but it's not like it's, it's really comfortable. Like this is my armpit pretty much, but it's not tight. Like it sits there and it's structured so it doesn't like pull up in your underarms or anything like that. And so yeah, this was good. I was able to like stretch it with blocking uh, to the right. Like it wasn't unblocked, it wasn't still the same stock, it, the same gauge as the stockinette, but I was able to block it to the measurements a little bit more easily than this one. It was, you know, it is more stretchy than this, which is already stretched out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I hope all of this is making sense. I written down anything. Oh, and also as I, you know, this sleeve is not the biggest circumference, but I, yes, I'm missing out on anything, on, on all of the things. I said I didn't want to use magic loop and I didn't. I used traveling loop, I think. I don't know if it's called traveling loop, but I just um, like take out the loop. Like I take out the cable. So my, all of my needles are in the project. So I don't have like, um, so I don't have to mess with the, like the strands and the float because you know, uh, when you would do magic loop, you pull out the needle. So that's why for me it is, um, it is more difficult to gauge the float length because the, the two, uh, the two sides of the fabric are laying like parallel to each other. But actually when you're wearing the sweater, they won't be parallel like this. They will be in the round. So you kind of have to take into account that. Well, when you like use the, this technique, well, you just pull out a little bit of the cable. Uh, is is like you're working in the round. You don't have. I think you. I think you get what I mean. You don't have to pull out the thing and mess around with the tension. So that's what I did, and it worked pretty well. And if this color work was feeling a tiny bit of a slog at the end, because the, you know there are many stitches. This was actually so fun because you could see uh, the um, like the same pattern repeat grow very fast. And also why I was scared about the bicep circumference, if I would have picked up in the same way as, you know, any other sweater, like circular yoke or raglan sweater that I did, uh, they would have been too tight, but you actually pick up extra, like in my, in my size, I think, like four extra stitches on each side. And also you pick up in the, in between the stitches on the underarm. So you get m more stitches to get this bicep circumference. So that was good. And that was very clever. I was like, this pattern is so difficult to grade. Like if I, I, I mean, I'm not a designer, so I could, I'm, I obviously cannot wrap my head around this, but she's like very, uh, so genius for doing that, for thinking about that. And also I really liked, and maybe I'll like integrate this technique in my other sleeves. You can see that like the sleeves are tapered, but sometimes, I mean, especially when you use, a, when you need on a bigger gauge, you like it's very it's not very obvious but can be obvious like the steps 
where you decrease and here is very smooth because what the pattern does here is that you for example let's say you have to decrease every eight rounds usually designers uh, decrease two stitches every round but this sweater like this pattern tells you to decrease one stitch every round so you don't decrease two stitches every eight round but you decrease one stitch every four rounds and like you alternate whether it is at the start or at the end of the round. And that was actually um, like it's more potato chippy because you had like less rows between each of the steps, but it also provided like a smoother transition, I think. And I like this, so I should maybe use it in other things. And yeah, all of my bind offs were tubular bind offs. Is it? Yes. And yeah, uh, this yarn is so yummy for like color work. If you touch it, it's so, so squishy. And I feel like it looks pretty even, at least for me. I'm not that experienced of a color work knitter. So if you're a color experienced color work knitter and you think this looks trash, um, yeah. Probably, but for me, it's like fine. And I also love the high contrast. I think it really suits me. And also, what else? I'll try to find some pictures of like a before and after blocking of this, if I can manage, because it's really interesting. This really fluffs up a lot when you're knitting with it, especially like on a 3.5 or Four millimeter needles it can look very netty and very see-through but when you block it really fluffs up and just becomes like much thicker and much uh, like more substantial and denser and that was so cool to see but yeah other than like the color gauge issue which is definitely something I learned from this I really suggest using this pattern, like even for me, which that, you know, I'm not that experienced with color work. It was really enjoyable and easy to follow. And even though this was a, like on a small gauge, like, I mean, first of all, I think it's really worth it because you can get a lot of detail in the color work, but it, you know, it's not that much of a slog, at least for me, I just um, canceled every, uh, every round that I did so I could see the progress on paper even though it didn't feel like it needed much I was like yeah if the chart is like 40 rows like I'm just saying numbers it's if it's 40 rows and I needed five rows and maybe it's not that m many rows but I'm still five rows like closer to the <laughs> the finishing line kind of and there are some mistakes in this but to be honest, that's also an advantage of knitting on a small gauge. Like, can you tell? Like, I really, do, I really cannot tell, to be honest. So, and they're probably in the back, to be fair. But, you know, can not really sure about it. And yeah, um, I would really suggest knitting up this pattern. And also checking out um, Unwind Knitwear's other, um, other patterns. Yeah. And yeah, uh, if you were scared of like your circular yoke being too deep on the underarm and you prefer a snugger fit, honestly, this is chef's kiss. I really, really love how it looks. Ooh. Oh my God. Also take a look at the floats on the inside. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh, like, don't they look like fabulous? Like I could wear this just like this on the inside out and I would be so happy. Like, isn't it so cool? I think so. Close up. Like, and I don't know if you can tell, but they're kind of, they sit very close to the fabric, to the main colored fabric. And yes. Oh, maybe you can see the difference. This is a blocked strand 
of and look how plush it is and this is an unblocked strand if i can manage yes like look at the difference so yeah and i like i whipped in almost all of the ends i think this is like the only one that i didn't weave in but honestly i didn't feel like it was necessary like it just lays really flat to the surface of the garment so it's not a problem for me and yeah as you can see i was wearing like that sweater almost next to skin and it wasn't that bad like i could definitely feel it and now that i've taken it off i'm like health oh. being that like rustic-y and hairy didn't irritate my skin that much so that was good but let's pop on this comfy boy oh my gosh yes like i've been wearing this so much because it's so comfortable either way i don't know if you can tell but this is the marseille sweater by petite knit here it is like i hope you can see it clearly and so yeah if you don't know this pattern this is like a drop shoulder dk weight oversized like fancy sweatshirty kind of vibe and the gauge is 21 stitches and i knitted a size medium yeah and also a medium for the color work sweater and i don't know if i said that if you're not familiar with the construction uh the pattern has you like cast on at the back and work short rows to shape like the to curve the shoulders at the back then you pick up stitches and you knit the fronts and you like join and so work flat till the underarms and then <coughs> and then you join everything in the round and then you pick up stitches and knit the sleeves and the collar as well so the cool thing about this the super cool thing about this is the yarn that i use this yarn it's this one and you see it's a like hand wound ball because this was a repurposed like yarn and i took it from a midi length uh skirt that my mom had in her closet but you know not really in the closet like those things which are like um, under the bed and like forgotten. I was like, oh mom, this is 100% wool, can I get it? And she was like, yes. So I unraveled it and it got like, this yarn is so lightweight and it has like so much meterage. So I had 315 grams, which were 1500 meters. So like if you do the like weight to ratio thing, it would be like less, like lighter than a lace weight but it just really is um it's just like made of ah this is so hard to, to show this is made of um like three small plies and they are not really twisted that much so like as they're not i think at least you know my spinning knowledge is very poor but i think logically when you twist your, um, when you, but yeah, when you twist your plies, it kind of becomes less big. Like it comes, it thinnens up a little bit because the plies are all com compressed together. So yes, um, this knitted on like four millimeters very decently. At first I was scared it was going to be too see-through, but as you can see, cannot really see anything. But this uh, yarn is 100% pure new wool. I think it was it was saying on the tag. And I don't know if you can see, but it looks so like velvety. And I don't know if you can see as well, but as it is so velvety, it picks up on literally anything. So I have to like, get one of those sticky rollers and just use it on the sweater and but yeah this is so comfortable like this is so comfortable that I took a nap in it without anything underneath and like if you know me and you follow me and 
you've been here before, you know that uh, I'm very sensitive. Like my skin is very sensitive. So me taking a nap in a sweater is like the ultimate goal that has never been reached before. I mean, I mean it was reached before with my first match size sweater. This was my, this is my second version. And so uh, let's go back. Construction, I said it. Modifications, I uh, cast it on with a long tail cast on instead of a Judy's Magic cast on just because I wanted a little bit more structure on the shoulders. And I don't want like, didn't want the fabric to stretch out over my shoulders so, so that you can like see things underneath. I didn't like it. And yeah, so I did that modification and it works really well. And I can tell that because I, I also did it on my first version of this sweater and I really like it as well. So, and of course I omitted the stripes. Uh, if you like, if you know this pattern, you know, this has stripes. Um, and what also, what I, um, yeah, the sleeve pickup rate, because basically I think that like the stitch gate is good, but the, at least before blocking, like the row gauge was a little off. So I had to modify the pickup rate. I think that I had to pick up less often that the pattern calls for because if your row gauge is tighter you have more rows for those centimeters so if you keep if you pick up the same amount that of stitches that the pattern recommends like your fabric on the sleeves can mm, like bulge up a little bit because you have uh, more stitches than actually what the pattern calls for because you have more rows on like the yoke and so I modified that and I still managed to have like a uh, 10 or 5 stitches um, more but I decreased uh, like more often and that worked fine in my opinion I was kind of scared that this yarn wouldn't work well with ribbing you can see that um, yeah I mean as always like I don't know if you've never if you've ever tried uh, working your stockinette and your ribbing in the same on the same needle size but that's what the, the pattern recommends for this one. So you can really get like the straight look. And um, yeah, it worked really well, but I was like scared it was going to be too see-through and too loose, but it actually, it, it's actually fine. And I was considering knitting the ribbing just inside out to make it neater. Like usually my, like I can say it myself, my ribbing is pretty neat because I knit really tightly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I was scared like that this wasn't going to look as nice, which probably it doesn't, but I think it's good enough. And what about on the inside? Yeah, it looks good on the inside as well. But yeah, I couldn't see much of a difference, so I just knitted it the usual way. Uh, also, I think um, I showed you in the next one, you can see that the yarn inside the pickup, uh, inside the fold, the color is different. This is a cotton yarn because I just couldn't find the rest of my skeins of this yarn. So I was like, um, I have, I really need to like, I really need to make this meterage. I really have to make this yarn last as much as possible. So you cannot see it. Let's just use another yarn. And I think it is causing the color to just flare out a little bit. But I also think that, you know, this, I don't know why, maybe because it's just like very oversized and it's very lightweight, so you don't have much weight to pull like the color down. But if, you know, the color is sitting the right way, it doesn't flare out, but it has kind of a tendency to do this, which doesn't really bother me to be honest, but I might try to put a little bit of, of an elastic inside of it inside of the collar, I don't really know. But yeah, this is my second, I think it's my first time knitting a second, a sweater a second time. Like knitting a sweater two time, I think. Yes, I think you could understand that. And this was so worth it, honestly. I wear my 
uh, like gray and black striped Marseille sweater a lot. And um, this is like no exception. It's just like the short rows. You have short rows on the back, on the front, up on the shoulders. And I'll just stand up a little bit. Oh gosh. To show you like, it just looks very store-bought and it just fits really well. It just follows your like body shape a lot. Like this yarn kind of uh, also maintains the folding lines a little bit, but it's fine, honestly. And what, what I love about this, of course, is that it is so lightweight and like it is warm, but it can be worn in like many different times of year. Like people also say, oh, you can also wear this weather in the summer. I cannot wear a t-shirt in the summer here. So it's not really in the summer, but like in the transitional month and in winter, you could totally use this. And um, yeah, this weight, I think, I know I weighted it actually. This is only um, 250 grams. And like for this oversize of a sweater, because I needed a size up, I think that my recommended size. And I also wanted to try uh, a different size than my previous one. I think that first one was a size small and this is a size medium, so it's, it's even bigger and it just feels like you're wearing nothing and it's absolutely wonderful. And I love the fact that it is so lightweight so much that I'm like implementing this characteristic in uh, another whip of mine, which I'll show you later. I have to speed up. Um, I always talk a lot of my finished objects, but anyways, um, this is my last finished object. This is, as you can see, a hat. And I used uh, just a like Angora acrylic blend I had in stash, like that my mom had in stash or, or that I inherited by someone else's stash. I didn't buy it, but like, I think that this color suits me a lot. So, um, so I was like very excited and I'm actually needing a matching uh, set. And yes, I mentioned this um, in my last podcast episode. And this might actually be the only hat which is not too tight on my head. Like it's like the other hats are not too tight, but this, like this is so comfortable to wear, you know? I have a ponytail, so I don't think this is like the best thing to do. Oh, kind of worked well. But yeah, uh, other than the ponytail, it just is really comfortable and I love the colors, just such a statement. And as it has some artificial fibers in it, um, yeah, it's very soft. It's very fluffy and my ribbing doesn't look the neatest. I think that uh, maybe I should have gone down a needle size. I used five millimeter needles and I don't know if you can see it's quite I mean I'm obsessed with tight gauges but I maybe should not be um but yeah um but yeah overall I've been trying like to knit knit things a bit more loosely uh, whether that means like actually focusing on loosening up, loosening up my tension or going up in needle sizes. Um, but yeah, this is actually on gauge. But basically, yeah, sorry, the pattern. I used uh, the free pattern from Pro Soho, which is called like Soft uh, Plus Soft and Cushy Hat uh, for the numbers, like the custom numbers. But that pattern is... Um, is in half fisherman's rib um but i as i wanted to do as i am doing a matching set i didn't want the hat to use a lot of the yarn because i'm knitting a scarf as the other piece of the matching set and um so i just did a regular one by one ribbing and then for the decreases i used the um, uh classic creep hat by Pro Solo, which is also a free pattern. So this is like a mishmash of patterns, 
but yeah i think that you know for the gauge is the soft and cushy hat and for the actual construction is the classic reap hat i think but yeah i did uh, a tubular cast on which you know i can see i cannot tell if you can tell actually if it actually made a difference but you know i never knit hat uh, like this type of hats which is maybe wrong i maybe shouldn't knit more hats like this so yeah, I just wanted to try something different. So here you have it. And I think that as this is my last finish object, we can, I can show you the, um, the other piece of the set. And yes, all of these bags that you see are just project bags. <laughs> um, yeah, here you have it. Oh my God. Okay, here's the ball of yarn, like size comparison with my head. And yeah, this like didn't use, I think I should have either like, yes, that's why I meant. I should have gone down in needle size to use up a little bit more yarn because in my like weird calculations, uh, this should have used uh, like half of the yarn, which is clearly not the case. This used like 50 grams. I don't know how many grams I have of this actually, like 300 uh, something grams, maybe. But yeah, this is quite substantial. And uh, well, let me check how much I have of this actually. <laughs> used for the hat 43 grams. And I had how much at the start? Oh, never mind. Okay, no, it's actually not that bad. Like I had 180 grams at the start and I used 43 grams for this. So I now have 137 grams. So I used like a quarter of the yarn to knit the hat and I have three quarters to knit the scarf. And which scarf you may be asking, which is like quite a good question. Well, this is actually quite long. Um, this is... Um, why do I forget? I forget pattern names so easily. Um, Brioche Scarf Chunky by Garno Slicked. And I'm using six millimeter needles. I think the pattern uh, suggests you to use like seven or eight millimeter needles. And, but you know, this yarn is not like super thick. It's like a DK slash worsted. So I think that, you know, I thought that uh, six millimeter was a, big enough of a gauge and also um that i the point is that i don't have bigger needles than six millimeter needles i mean i have nine but that would be way too big so you know and i'm actually considering like if you put it against something it's not see-through but i'm actually yeah considering like am i considering it i mean i thought about ripping it back and just work it and just start again with a smaller needle size just to make it dense so that I don't have a scarf you know this is this is pretty I mean it's it's not super long but you know uh, how long a scarf can be you know so maybe if I use up more yarn then it's going to be not as long but I think about that another time but I'm actually like uh, like my hands like this gauge a lot, I feel like. It's very comfortable to knit. And yeah, I'm sorry, this is brioche stitch. Which, and it is my first um, project in brioche stitch. And I'm also, yeah, learning how to do these increases, which, which they look really nice and they are so cool. And I don't know if like this is true if you knit English style, but because I've tried uh, knitting brioche English style in the past and it was like a bit more tedious. And, but actually brioche continental is actually very fun. It goes very like smoothly. I don't know the way you position the yarn and you bring it forward and backwards, but you know, it's just more fluid and more of a fluid motion in continental style for me, for my hands, of course. I've been enjoying this a lot. I haven't been working on this a lot. I This is just, um, I've knitting this on the train. 
yes and i'm also um going on a ski trip this next week and i am yes i think i'm taking this because you know i still have a lot of yarn to use but i think i have to like i don't know i'm trying i'm not doing like any of the sizes in the pattern in the sense that you know as in the sophie shawl i'm trying to knit to the to half of the scarf with half of the yarn and then decrease again because this is a like crunch croissant shape is it i mean it's not you increase on both sides so it's not a cross song or maybe it is either way you just increase on both sides and then decrease so but yeah i don't think i don't know if we have a scale where i'm going i should ask because how do i weigh the yarn and know when I should decrease. Not that I think I'll get there anytime soon, but you know, just in case. <laughs> and yeah, this pattern is so clear and I actually recommend this as a like first brioche project because you learn a lot um, in the first, like you learn a lot. You also learn like how to increase. And then, I mean, I haven't reached the, that point in the pattern, but I'll, you'll also learn how to decrease. And at the start, you have very few stitches, so you can actually like understand what you're doing. And also, I think that at, because you have uh, increases and decreases, you understand better like the anatomy of the stitch itself. Like brioche is very hard to fix if you do mistakes. And that's, <laughs> like, I'm very scared of it, actually. But for example, I have, I already learned how to fix when maybe I skip a a yarn over or I drop a yarn over. Like if I if I like if I would have to lather down, I wouldn't know how to do it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a magician of brioche. I'm not a master in brioche. But yeah, this is really really written really well. And for me, like I am a visual learner, but this pattern was reading so, written so well that even like the increases and the trickiest part, I was able just to read the pattern and understand what I was supposed to do without like having to look up a video on YouTube, a tutorial, anything like that. But yeah, this will be the set. Um, now I kind of regret not making this in... Um, Mm -hmm. what's it called in a fisherman's rib because actually brioche and a fisherman's rib look very similar but i yeah i mean in retrospect everybody you know everybody is good at saying things about the past but you know when you actually had to make a decision you chose this for a reason but yeah if i had made this in um um in half fisherman's rib i think this would have taken like half of the yarn and now i have like one quarter and three quarters and that's fine and i also thought like that maybe i would enjoy a longer scarf and a thicker scarf than a thicker hat uh yes and maybe if like this is this ends up being like very large and very long, I could maybe use it on, on top of the head, which is not like the most clever thing. Like you could have just made the wrap the the scarf shorter and made the beanie thicker. But again, like um, now it's done, and I actually like the fit a lot. So yes, I think it's going to remain in the state as it is, and yes. It's going, I think, and I'm participating in, uh, I mean, I'm participating. I still haven't posted anything. I will be participating in two knit alongs, uh, the winter set cal that uh, Bubbles and Berries and Venetia of the Woolly Worker are hosting, and also the fluffy scarf cal that um, Ninitz is hosting. So yes, kind of double dip, and I cannot wait to get more uh more um, working more on this i'm just very much enjoying working brioche and it's making me want to start a brioche cardigan which you might ask yourself do you have the yarn for it no of course i don't so i won't be starting it but you know a girl can dream 
and uh, another project which what's going on oh yeah that you haven't seen before is just a new cast on i don't know if i told you last time but i've been accepted in um the in a testnet and i feel like i feel so grateful to be doing this this is the testnet for the step-by-step -step cardigan by um florence miller or animated by florence and um yes a little a little backstory basically i uh, this is so much there is so much to say um about this and it's i have 50 minutes of um what's it called english is not working with me today uh of footage so if you're still here uh please bear with me and i hope you're having a great time um Yes, uh, basically uh, I did the application for this, I applied and then she, like Florence says on her story, like Instagram stories, that she had uh, many, many applications and then uh, she was, she wanted to like um, test with new people, like to get new people that didn't test it for her before to test this cardigan and I was like, oh well, I tested for her like a cancel this summer, so it's like maybe I'm not big, but that's fine, you know. And I actually wasn't there, ah! and that's super fun. And actually, um, uh, Abigail from um, Abigail Makes Stuff is in the test net. Also, Francesca, an Italian knitter, is there. Also, Casey from Young Folk Knits is there. So it has been very like it's very very cool to see all of you know these people that you know through the internet being like in the same like it's not in the same room but like in the same environment like as you i guess and yeah this is how the cardigan um looks like now i started it very late uh compared to the other testers because then i was you know doing my exams and then she uh like she sent the pattern like a few days later then when like she notified the tester, like when she contacted the testers, which is totally fine. But basically um, the suggested yarn is Noro Madara. And I saw like many people w were using like Noro, but I was like, oh, well, um, I checked like, and the only way for me to get Noro is like through an Etsy store. And it had like 30 or 20, but a lot of money uh, for shipping and I was like well it's coming up to be $150 for a cardigan <laughs> which you know it's a lot for me at least like <laughs> yes and it hurt a lot and some a tester is actually using the yarn I wanted to use which is uh, Noro Viola in Takahashi I think uh, but I also liked the color 21 which i don't know what it's called but it's like yummy and the gauge would have been fine and i was so jealous and actually she she told me that um takahashi has been like will be discontinued so she was like oh buy it while you can i'm like i cannot afford that damn and yeah like i'm still crying a little bit so i asked on my instagram stories for like noro ish and tweety yarn recommendations and people like suggested um it's a year iron tweed uh iron tweed again many people suggested iron tweed and but yeah, that's expensive as well so it wasn't really solving my problem even though i appreciated the help and like a girl i mean a girl i don't know if it's a girl but someone suggested um katya which is a uh, I don't know if it's Italian, but it definitely is widely available. Yeah, it's made in Italy, of course, at least. Like, I don't know if the brand is Italian, but it is made in Italy. So it's really like widely available in yarn shops here. And I was looking through like their like self-patterning yarns. And I bought um, five balls of this yarn, which is called Azteca which is much acrylic it's 
47% acrylic and 53% wool and you know it was fine and like if you look at it the colors are like so pretty um then I started knitting and I had like a crisis okay because I mean where is it where is it where is it where is the swatch I wasn't crazy to start without what swatching yeah here it is Here's this watch. Look how pretty this is. Like this is very faded, but then of course, like mm, I should have thought about this. I mean, I did, but at the same time I had hope. Like I know that uh, you're using very few meters to do like each row. So uh, the fade goes uh, slower than in a cardigan. And of course it came out stripy and I had like a huge crisis like uh that day i was overwhelmed already and then yes i also like crocheted a couple of things for uh my boyfriend's uh, birthday and it's twins birthday and crochet really hurts my hands and they were very labor intensive so i was like oh finally i have the yarn let's cast on this cardigan and get away with knitting finally so i can relax a little bit then I started and I was so sad because I don't like it. <laughs> like it's not that bad, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not ugly, but it's just not what I'm going for, you know? So um, I, yes, as you can see, I didn't even frog it. Like it's just here and yeah, I didn't like actually the um, pairing of this like reddish thing with the dark-ish gray like the gray and the pink look really nice but this shade i don't like how they look with the rest so yes uh i spent like 60 euros on this either way which is yeah like it's not too much but it's still money like i'm a student and i'm using my own money to buy this yarn and that was like i just spent 60 euros on this and i hate it and i I don't know, I send, I send pictures to my dating friends, like trying to get help and they say, oh, my, but maybe like this goes very fast, you can keep going. And I was like, like that made me so sad and I needed just a few centimeters. I need like five centimeters and I was already like, oh my gosh, you know, did I make like the biggest mistake of my life? So I wasn't really that motivated to keep going. So I don't know what I'll do with this yarn. Um, maybe, um, I'll try to give it like the balls that I didn't use back to the lady at the yarn store, which, you know, was really nice and it's really nice. But yeah, usually when I go there to shop and I go like, well, I don't know if I'll use like three, like 13, 15, like how many balls I'll use. And she, and she usually says like, oh, well, if you like didn't use at all those balls, you, you can just give it back to me and I'll give it back the money so I can like sell it to other people that need it, you know? Like if you don't use it, just give it back to me. But basically, um, I really like how the, the fade started at the gray. But of course, when I finished this watch, I was at the pink section. So I opened the ball to do this. And then I was like, oh, well, I didn't, I don't want the cardigan to start on the pink. I want it to start on the gray so it can fade, so it can fade to pink. And um, so I started another ball. So um, of five balls of yarn, which I, that I purchased, I used two, like I opened two. So this is called being smart. But anyway, um, like the first thing that I tried actually was uh, holding this yarn which is like a bit tweety double because this is like a <coughs> DK weight and the gauge of the step-by-step -step cardigan is 16 stitches. Um, so I was like, well, 16 stitches with a DK weight? I don't really know. So I didn't even like swatch it single, like held single. And yeah, so then I purchased this, this yarn, hated this yarn. And then I was like, well, I don't want to buy more yarn. So uh, this was uh, actually, I, this is my, this was my Christmas gift to my mom this year. And like, I don't know if she didn't like the color, but she's almost like, oh, well, for that project, you can this, use the yarn that like you gifted me. I was like, mom, 
like if you don't like it you can just say you don't like it not just like mm, like faking and offering it to me like as you're being like generous like if you don't like it and you want me to use it just say that either way um yeah it's a deco weight so i tried holding it with this cone of wool in it and i also have another like lighter green um but you know i like the tweed i like the tweediness of the yarn so you know i wasn't going for a marled cardigan and you know this is quite nice actually but i like just washed this single and it is a bit yeah it's not see-through actually but it is a more open gauge still on gauge like it's still the right measurement um so yeah um moral of the story uh i hope the to get back some money from this and i hope yes and i just cast it on with this yarn held single and like i don't know if it ever happened to you but for like big test knits or like for important test knits which i don't know what that means but like test knits that you feel like you want to do a really good job and like you want to provide inspiration for people that would come after you um yeah this is a free pattern and if you i mean you probably do like her tutorial has like half a million views so maybe you know the step-by-step -step sweater also from like by Florence, she just put it like uh, as a free pattern for, uh, because that's what she wished that she had um, when she started knitting, just a step-by-step -step tutorial, a free pattern for um, not a tiny gauge, but not a bulky weight sweater. And she had some requests for a cardigan version of that. And this, so this will also be a free pattern with tutorial included and you know as a test knitter i feel like i have to do like a really good job in like finding a yarn which you know can provide inspiration and i want to like provide value to people because this pattern will probably be knitted more times than maybe paid patterns i don't know but you know so i was like well i'm not using noro yarn so i'm not like providing uh, like color inspiration uh, I'm not using more so I'm, it's not like even textured the uh, things that it's interesting no I'm not using like a colorful impactful color either so I was like <laughs> yes I'm a crisis I'm in a crisis um, but yeah maybe uh, the the fact that uh, also uh, like a thicker DK weight can be knitted uh, on 5.5 millimeter needles can be like a uh, good inspiration for people like if they like if for example if I see a iron weight or worsted weight pattern I wouldn't think that the yarn that I have in stash which is DK could work and not even like try to swatch with that so like if people see my project on Ravelry and see like oh but like I thought the soft like the soft tweed by drops was like a um what's it called like a dk why is she using it and maybe they actually see that it works um i don't know yeah i hope like i hope this is good enough like i know this is good enough but i think you get my point and it actually looks pretty pretty nice uh, like it's blowing out a little bit but it has like it's a military green with uh, rust speckles green light green dark green gray and yellowy speckles like tweedy bits and it's actually cute I actually like it so I just did like a speed run for, to just finish the yoke and I'm now on a sleeve and yes, uh, what else to say? Yeah, and this will have like a double knit bottom band, which I'm super, super looking forward to. But yeah, I think that, um, you know, this is just my second, is it my second ball of yarn? This is my third ball of yarn. And so this, again, as is this sweater, this will be lighter. So I think I'll have to like write it in my feedback form. And I don't think that 
this should that should be a problem for like Florence to understand how much yarn it takes because you know it's lighter so it takes less grams but the meterage it's supposed to be the same like 950 meters but if the yarn is lighter you'll have 950 meters which will be less balls of yarn um yes and this is my progress on it and yeah i really suggest you like checking out the hashtag i think i haven't looked through that but there are many cool versions of this cardigan and i'm knitting a size c which is the third size yes which is supposed to be like a medium size or something and i'll take this on a trip so i can get a um, good amount of progress on this and the deadline is like the 20th of March so I have like less than a month and yes like I'm f I'm feeling better now that I've finished the yoke but because that's the part I um I hate the most of doing like a raglan cardigan or a raglan anything really the raglan is the problem uh, but yeah uh this went by quite quickly so I hope that maybe on the trip I can get the sleeve both of the sleeves done maybe and i don't know so yeah deep talks about test knitting and i know it's late stay with me again i have my last working project which is my arctic light sweater and i uh i think i had the yoke done last time and now we have a yoke and the sleeve and let me tell you, this is so heavy. Like if this entire sweater, which is like super oversized, like 250 grams, this is probably like uh, 300 grams minimum. And you know, it's not even close to being done. This leaf on just by itself took four balls of yarn, okay? So, it's quite heavy and ends up, uh, I think I won't have enough yarn because, you know, I have four, uh, four for the sleeve, for the first sleeve, so four for the second sleeve as well, which means that I'll have two balls left and that won't be enough, of course, to finish the body. But thankfully, uh, the yarn shop that I, sh that I bought this yarn from has like a website and like if you can purchase this yarn online. I'm using Trilli by Campolmi Filati, which is a yarn shop in Florence. And uh, 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 this is uh, like a sport weight yarn and I'm holding it double and knitting on 5.5 millimeter needles. Again, I'm knitting a lot of 5.5 millimeter needles lately. So yeah. Um, and this is 100% superwash merino. And, but yeah, like, it does look very nice for sure, but like, but like for how uh, heavy it is, damn, I hope I'll, I'll be able to wear it. Like I, I tried it on and I could really feel the like 200 grams on the sleeves. I was like, whew, then this was like so heavy. <laughs> Either way, if you don't know this pattern, um, this is by Veronica Limburg or Kutovakika and it is a raglan. You don't have short rows. And it is like a, it is constructed a little bit differently the raglan than the ones we are used to, and I modified like the increase rates on the raglan. So if you're interested um, to hear more about that, uh, you can go watch like my last episode. I tried to explain it really well in that episode, and yeah, it has twisted rib. Um, I did tubular bind off. Is it? Yes, and you have all of these cables just running down the top of the sleeve like this horseshoe cable and these half twisted rib cables and it's really fun to knit but yeah this sleeve kind of took a long time maybe because it is quite wide um yeah uh i don't know how much i'll be able to knit on this like uh for the next episode I don't think I will be able to knit the other sleeve as well because I have the, the test knit to prioritize at the moment. And yes, because I'm trying to 
a work on like a more complex pattern along with a stockinette one if I feel the need to work on a stockinette project and but yeah I don't think this will get a lot of love from me in the next few weeks but yeah she's cute and yarn owls yarn chicken I already know then we are on to the acquisition section I believe let me check my notes nope um but I won't talk about this a lot basically my mom like her her wrists are not doing uh their best so she started damn this is so heavy she started for my brother a zipper sweater man and she almost finished the body but you know it this is really heavy so she was like i don't know if i'm able to finish it so oh my gosh i inherited the project so come on yes i'll finish it for her you know she's we're almost done there so yeah uh i won't talk a lot about this it's not my main priority but yeah it's a zipper sweater man by petite knit and i think we're needing the size medium so that's also something that it has been added to my work working to my whips pile oh yeah i just um yeah i was just going to make myself lunch and also i forgot that um basically my mom uh, is giving me tons of yarn that you know mm, i'm very lucky that my mom uh, is a crafty person and she used to crochet a lot and she used to knit a lot not too much these days but she has kept all of her yarn in like giant baskets underneath things and she found like a huge uh basket and box sorry a box of like so much cotton yarn in there which you know it's a great resource and i'm super um happy that now i have it but yeah i think that one of the things that i will do uh this afternoon is just trying to sort that out and maybe putting that stash on ravelry but i don't know if i'm that good so we'll see and um i'll put up a picture basically yesterday i was again really overwhelmed i'm about to uh, leave for this trip and i still have so much to do so um i i was feeling i don't know like i wanted to just try something and i unraveled my first pair of socks which never made an appearance on this channel but i thought that before like ripping them apart and destroying them i had to give them a chance to be seen by the world so i'll put up a b-roll of something of how they looked and they were very matted and very unwearable really and this yarn i bought in norway and this is like it's not hand dyed i'm not that fancy it's like it's mm, in the uh, industrial yarn yeah the industrially produced and it's still damp because i yeah it was soaking in water tonight but i just thought that i could show you and this is like an acrylic um acrylic wool blend i think and I use this, you like you can clearly see this like an worsted iron weight and I knitted it on 2.5 millimeter needles and you know I knit quite tight so um, they weren't wearable and I thought uh, let's unravel them and knit like a Sunday, Sunday sock with this because this yarn looks pretty so I don't want it to go to waste and also I need a pair of socks. You know, if you've been following along, you know that me and socks, like, we don't really get along. <laughs> and I've knitted my first pair of socking at socks, and it didn't actually work out very well. I asked one of my knitting friends if she wanted them, and yes, we still have to figure that out, but, you know, just to say that I'm not that happy about them. So, yay! I have new sock yarn! And that's like something I, I like about knitting. Like you can um, get the feel of new yarn just by unraveling something that, you know, you haven't touched and worn in like years. This, uh, I feel like they were those socks 
they have been those socks for like more than a year so this feels like i got new yarn but i actually didn't spend any money and um but yeah i'm just like making use of something i already have which is also like super cool uh you can see it just picks up on anything like come on shut up and but like this yarn it was also like a skirt and now it's a sweater and now i'll like i'll use it a lot as a sweater and they were socks they were super ugly and super unusable and they will become a new shiny pair of uh hopefully better socks than what they used to be but honestly i don't know if if those socks could get any worse so mm. yes uh that's very nice i think uh yes i've talked about everything guys and i know this was long so if you are still with me and you push through thank you so much for doing so again if you have questions in the comments uh if you have some questions leave them in the comments or go check out my Ravelry project pages i um i think i'm doing good uh but you know you can you can always get better of course but i'm doing my best uh, to keep Ravel my Ravelry projects as, as updated as I can and put as many information there as I can. And also, yeah, if you want to tell me what you were working on or what you were doing while watching this, it's always very nice to see those comments. And if you're new, well, this was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed and uh, maybe you'll subscribe and stick around and yes oh my gosh i feel so tired mentally um and i feel so rambly but i think that's all uh i wish you happy knitting and that everything you're knitting on is a success and that's and that life is being kind to you and